In this documentary, we saw major issues related to infrastructure, higher water levels in the Missouri River, combined with a severe storm left 50 levees broken and fields swamped. But what about those of us that don't live in middle America? According to NOAA, roughly 40% of Americans live in counties directly on the shoreline. I spoke with Dr. William Sweet, an oceanographer with NOAA, about high tide flooding and how it could be a big problem for those living on the coast. What exactly is high tide flooding or what they call sunny day flooding? Sure. Well, high tide flooding is oftentimes referred to as nuisance or, or uh, sunny day flooding. It's increasingly common due to years of increases in relative sea level rise. Uh, it's the kind of flooding that used to not occur decades ago, but because of sea level rise now, uh, full moon tides are sufficient to flow into stormwater drains and flood into streets. It's sea level rise, it's high tide flooding. So what are some of the major issues that high tide flooding can cause in coastal communities? Well, high tide flooding is mostly disruptive. Um, it's clogging stormwater drains, it's spilling into streets, it's making people go different routes to school, to go into different routes to church. But there's other impacts as well. Um, there's some, as I said, stormwater systems are degraded, and that's particularly a, a problem if it rains too, then there's just really no way to get water off the streets. Um, it threatens fresh water supplies, uh, wastewater systems, septic tanks. So there's really a host of concerns and problems that are surfacing right now in high tide flooding, and that's why we're monitoring and tracking the situation at NOAA. Your report projects that high tide flooding will roughly double across the U.S. coastlines in 2019 and continue to increase over the next few decades. Can you give us sort of an explanation as to why that is? Well, the, the main reason is sea level rise. Um, Again, due to decades worth of sea level rise, the gap is really closing between the tides and our infrastructure. It used to take a localized storm to flood streets. Now it's these full moon tides are really starting to be a problem, backflowing into stormwater systems and flowing into the streets. And so what we've documented in this report is we're trying to keep a, a, a perspective of you know, how things have changed and how are they likely to change in the future. And do infrastructure systems need to be upgraded in response to the changing environment? Well, yes, the short answer is they do. Um, the stormwater systems in particular, through the combination of sea level rise and high tide flooding and with heavier rains, many communities are just finding that they're actually flooding uh, quite often, uh, sufficiently enough that they're actually spending money to actually upgrade and defend against these kind of problems. Installing pump systems that actually actively remove the water where these downhill gradient of the old stormwater systems of yesterday just aren't able to clear the water. So that's sort of the ground zero is, is water where it sh used to not be and now it is. As well as then also the fortifying against the big storms, the hurricanes, as well as the lesser storms, both prove fruitful in, in really defending against this, getting critical infrastructure off the ground and recognizing you know, the vulnerabilities today so you can defend against those for tomorrow. How concerned should we be? Can anything be done to reverse these trends? Well, it should be concerning. Uh, you know, the national rate of high tide flooding has doubled in the last 20 years or since 2000. Uh, when we look to the future by 2050, the rate of high tide flooding is likely to be 5 to 15 times greater than it is today. So for a local perspective, somewhere like Norfolk, Virginia, typically would experience five days of high tide flooding in around 2000, mostly from storms. Uh, last year had about 10 days of high tide flooding in a combination of storms and sunny day conditions. In 2050, those rates are expected to really amplify upwards of 60 to 170 days of high tide flooding. So it really is a, a problem, not just in Norfolk, but in many East and Gulf Coast communities. And it's something that uh, there's time to plan and change. And what we're doing at NOAA is providing the science and services so these communities can plan and prepare, uh, prepare accordingly for future changes. And finally, William, when considering the issue of climate change for future generations, what message should we be conveying about the need for awareness, the need for preparation for a changing environment? Well, I think it's important to recognize that change is at hand now. Uh, sea level rise impacts are occurring now. It's not an end of century uh, kind of discussion. The future's here, it's a floodier future. Uh, and the pathways uh, going forward all suggest more flooding, 
uh, more water in the streets, more uh, just general vulnerabilities to coastal communities. So really sort of knowing's half the battle. And I, I think it's something collectively that just these communities and the nation as a whole is going to have to come together with to come up with some holistic solutions to deal with uh, rising tides and to be more resilient both to storms and sea level rise. William Sweet, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure.